Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about DBT seed files and learn about what they are, why they're important, and how you use them in DBT. Now, managing reference data effectively is really important for any data engineering team and project, and using DBT crucially makes it easier than ever with its powerful seed functionality. So in this video, we're going to explore how to use dbt seed files to really help manage your reference data efficiently. We're going to cover everything from creating and maintaining seed files to incorporating them into your dbt projects. So by the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how to leverage dbt seeds to streamline your data flows and enhance the data consistency across your projects. So I hope you find it useful. So what actually are seed files? Well, seed files are CSV files that typically contain very small static data sets, which are to be used as reference data within your DBT project. Now, using this approach really simplifies the process of managing reference data to really help with consistency across all your data transformations in DBT. So those CSV files and that information effectively ends up as a CSV file within your seeds folder within your dbt project and there's a couple advantages to that one it's automatically now version controlled along with the rest of your models and tests all in one place it also then appears on your lineage diagrams and all of the documentation that dbt produces out of the box once you've got your reference data as a seed stored within your dbt project you can end up Apply that out to Snowflake, Redshift, or Google BigQuery into your relevant downstream tables, potentially into a dimension. A uh, common use case is to have standardized hierarchies, for example, which are used across the business, and that data may not exist in a source system, or the data is coming from multiple source systems and you need to standardize it. So that's what seeds are. Next, we're going to head over to DBT and Snowflake to take a look at a real world demo. I'm going to use this lesson. It's a lesson from my DBT Accelerator course that I'm currently teaching live to an exclusive group of students. This course is coming to you and it's going to be available from August 2024. If you're interested and you want to get on the wait list to be the first to know when we go live, then please check out the link in the video description below. So let's take a look at seeds in dbt. So the first thing is we've got this seeds folder on our file explorer on the left hand side. This isn't something I've created. This is something that dbt provides when you initialize the project out of the box. We're going to right click on here. We're going to click create file and we're going to give it a name. Now our name needs to end with .csv because don't forget a seed file is essentially a CSV file, a comma separated file. If we click create, we're going to create a country codes CSV file or subset of that. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste some data in here and explain what we've got here. So we've got heading, country code, comma, country name. We've got the short two character country code and the country name associated with that. I'm going to click save. That's created our seed within our seeds folder within our DBT project. If I head on over to our connected Snowflake environment, and just prove to you I haven't got a table at the moment with country codes in here. You can see it doesn't exist or not authorized. Heading back to dbt then, I need to be able to create this seed as a table in my Snowflake environment. To do that, I execute the command dbt seed, and that's gonna look at my seeds folder, it's gonna identify the CSVs I've got in there, and it's gonna create them as tables on my Snowflake environment. So there you go, that's ran. If we look at the details, create a new table in my development schema, call country codes, and it's inserted the values from my seed file in there. Let's just prove that out by executing the country codes query, and there's our table. If we look in here, we can see our table in here. If we refresh, there's our country codes table. We're gonna use the seed in a transformation, and to do that, it's really easy. It's like referencing any other model. Um, so if we go to our models in dbt, we're gonna create a new one, and we're gonna just call this dim country. So we're gonna pretend that we need to create a dimension for these countries, and it's gonna require data from the seed file. 
Now to do this, I can just use the reference function, reference my country code seed. When I click save, you will see the lineage get updated. So my dim country will reference that seed file. So when this refreshes, there we go. There's my seed file and my country. So importantly, dbt now knows my country code seed file needs to be put in place and populated before I can populate my dim country. This will also appear on the automated documentation within dbt as well. If I then do a dbt run and just limit that to my dim country table and execute this, there we go, dbt's created dim country. By default, don't forget, it creates it as a view. So I've got creative players view dim country, selecting everything from my country codes. Back into Snowflake then, execute this query, dim country, and if I expand the views and hit refresh, there's my dim country view using the data from my seed that I provided. It's as easy as that. And if you wanna get into more detail around seeds, and everything else dbt then check out the link below to sign up on my waitlist for when my dbt exclusive accelerator course goes live in august 2024. now there's a couple of best practices that you need to consider when updating and maintaining seed files over time as part of your dbt project the first one is to regularly review and update the seed files as required so your data outputs are only going to be as good as the information and data that you provide it with, making sure these are up to date and documenting any changes to seed files over time so the other team members, the other data engineers in your team are aware of the updates and why you've made them is really important. And of course, because the part of your code base within your DBT project, they're automatically version controlled so you can roll back or you can look at the lineage of changes over time. And some of the benefits of seed files are they can improve your data consistency, reduce errors in reporting and analytics, and simplify data management. Now, first of all, the consistency piece, because your reference data is centralized in one place, it ensures and promotes consistency across all your models that you're working on within dbt. Next point to manage is simplicity, and it makes it easier to manage these small data sets or within your dbt environment without having to rely on external dependencies. And so it makes it much more efficient, faster and simpler to update reference data. One of the downsides though, is that if this reference data needs to be maintained by your business users, they will either need to provide you with the updates to when that reference data changes. And of course that doesn't always happen. Um, or they'll need access to dbt and then that could um, lead to increased costs or the need to upskill these people, let's say, outside of your data team. So you may need another mechanism or process really for them to provide you with frequent updates or to notify you of any changes. Now, a couple of use cases I've seen in the real world are retail companies who might get product information from a variety of source systems and they want to standardize these product hierarchies and Keep it consistent so when data consumers are interrogating the data um, through reports or analytics, they've got a consistent set of product categories and hierarchies that make sense to everybody in the business. That's one really... Another way I've used DBT seeds in the past is from a more uh, technical perspective to really help with unit testing. So I've used seed files to provide a known input into my dbt workflows and transformations and that means i know what my expected output after the transformations have been applied and what it needs to look like so by creating my test cases which are going to be used for unit testing at a development stage gives me early feedback from my development changes putting them as seed files keeps them in one place it also versions them as well so if i need to change that over time it makes it really easy to do that you can also then leverage it with dbt test functionality all within the one place. It's something I really like as an approach and it's something I've already talked about on this channel and I'll put a link up in the corner of the video now so you can check that out if you're interested. And so some advanced tips to get the most out of dbt seed files. Well, if you can automate the generation of seed files, if the data exists in an external source, all the better for it. Quite often though, these files exist as reference data or seed files because they don't exist anywhere else. And so keeping them up to date is obviously really important. Wrapping some tests around it. So using the dbt test functionality, either the generic tests or singular tests 
to really validate the content of seed files and having that as part of your project really, really helps. And so those two are just a couple of little tips to make sure that your seed files actually help and not hinder you in your DBT development approach. So let's wrap things up. So seed files are typically used for reference data, slowly moving static data, and are CSV files stored within the seeds folder within your DBT project. Some good use cases for seeds are list of mappings such as country codes or country names, as we saw in the demo, potentially a list of test email addresses to exclude from analysis, or a list of employee account IDs. Poor use cases for tests, well, you definitely don't want to be storing live data in there that's been exported from a source system into a CSV or any kind of production data that contains sensitive information or personally identifying information and passwords. Pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised what you see out there. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos come in very soon.